Hey everybody, and welcome to my video about the Oppo Reno 10 5G's camera system. Before we start, this video is sponsored by MediaTek in partnership with Oppo, but the thoughts of the device and the photos are my own and yours as well. I'm sure you're gonna have some strong opinions. The photos and the video from this video are gonna be from here, which is really cool. I've been working on three videos overall, this being the second one, which is gonna be covering everything about the camera system. The first one that we uh, uploaded was an overview. If you wanna see that as well, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And the next one that we're gonna be uploading is on gaming. So yes, make sure that you are subscribed if you wanna see the gaming performance on the Oppo Reno 10 5G. The MediaTek Dimensity 7055 g is the workhorse under the hood of the phone's performance. It's the reason that we're getting such strong features in the camera system. The build of the phone is excellent, but like a car, no matter what performance, altering decals or fins that you put on the outside, the things that you add to the car, it's got to have the engine behind it to push it. The chipset here allows support for up to 200 megapixel main cameras with multiple hardware-based camera engines with premium noise reduction to get the best image quality possible. It is also the reason you are able to record 4K HDR video that makes it possible to record video with drastic lighting differences. Uh, we're gonna show you that later on in this video, but still be able to see everything in that footage clearly. And then it also adds features like AI camera enhancements, like bokeh or background blur, and selective focus where the AI identifies the subject that it's shooting and then blurs everything else. And did I mention that the chipset's got Wi-Fi 6, which is great for sharing the stuff that you are taking photos of, unless you just show your phone to people. But who does that? It's got eight plus eight gigs of expandable RAM, which gives it a total of 16 gigs of RAM, which is incredible. And to save all of that, it's got 256 gigs of storage. So let's have a look at some of these camera modes. And we're just gonna walk around Battery Park, I guess, and shift Expressor Bar, uh, and uh, have a look at this. Oh, there's a boat coming past, let's start. Okay, so let's head on to the normal photo mode. I'm gonna quickly just snap some of these. That's the one-time zoom. And we've got that nice, ooh, that actually looks really nice. Um, and then two times. Let's have a look at these. Yeah, they're really good. That five-time zoom is cool, but like obviously the one-times is where the quality is at. What do you think of these? The next one that I really wanted to see is the fact that it's got a portrait mode. Um, and uh, portrait mode is one of the reasons I use photo on a phone. You know, you want to take some really cool photos. So there's a one times and two times. Uh, I'm actually gonna take a photograph of you. Jacques, this is Jacques. I'm gonna do the two times. And then I'm gonna bounce back down to the one time zoom. And then obviously the selfie mode. Let's have a look. This is portrait. This is the selfie mode portrait. There's no like zoom in this mode. You can change the depth of field. So it's got the f-stop, f, -stop, f uh, 4.5 right now. But if we want to do like a really strong one, it's f uh, 1.4, it's pretty good actually. What I like about this is that a lot of these kinds of phones don't actually offer uh, what the f-stop is. They just say it's going to be like blurry or less blurry. But this is actually the technical terms for this which is cool. In the photo mode, you can actually select on the top of the screen whether you want high res mode, which is 64 megapixels, or just regular mode, which is obviously lower, but it'll be faster to shoot. So you can see it's a lot faster, but if you want that really high image quality, 64 megapixels is really good. It's a little bit slower, but it's worth it if you want to get that high crisp image. Obviously you can change the aspect ratio. I'm, I'm shooting all of these in four by three because that's traditional photos, but you can do like a full sensor. Oh wow. You can change your sensor to like full. So if I, if, yeah, if I choose this, you can go 60 by nine, which would be like the crop of the screen, but, or you could use the full sensor, which is cool. Let's test out some of the pro photo modes. Well, it's called pro mode. In pro mode, you can choose all the pro settings that you would on a normal camera. So your white balance, your focused, uh, autofocus or, or manual focus if you'd like um, and uh, your exposure settings and just like control them exactly the way that you want to do that which is very cool I think a lot of people won't be using pro mode unfortunately but it's a great way to understand how a camera works like the one that we're filming this video on and uh, like eventually you start using a camera and then also like tweak settings to how you want those photos to look it's great that 
the phone allows you to do that. Um, and a lot of phones kind of lock this behind, uh, you know, just lock this behind the, the, the chipset, which sucks. See, I'm changing the ISO. Uh, you can change the shutter, the shutter speed. So you want it like a super fast one or super slow one. This is how you would get like night trails of, of car lights or uh, stars moving. Uh, and you can, if you tweak with these and you, you do a little bit of research, you can actually get that. So let's take some, let's take some really nice pro photos. Oh wow, it's got a histogram as well. If you can choose the histogram over here. So histogram will allow you to see if anything's like overexposed or, or, or what the metering is, the focus metering. Oh, here we go. Oh, can I? Oh, and, and pro mode works on the two times. Oh, and the five times zoom. Oh, nice, okay. What I do recommend if you are going to try pro mode is that you can lock certain uh, features to automatic. So for instance, you can set on automatic focus so that it focuses automatically for you, but you can then tweak with the other ones. Or you can also do uh, automatic white balance, for instance. You know, instead of having to tweak all of these for every single photograph, you can set it up to just do automatic, which is quite nice. So you, you've got control over certain aspects. Of the, of, of the photo instead of all of them, which can be overwhelming if you're new to professional settings. Okay, so in the tray, obviously pro mode, extra HD, panoramic, uh, slow-mo, time-lapse, dual video mode, which, which is quite cool. It allows you to um, take video of different, um, of both, both cameras, using the front-facing camera and the rear view camera. Hey! Which is really nice and nifty. Um, and you, oh wow, and you can control the uh, lens on the back. Let's do a panoramic photo while we're here. Let's get a nice, let's get a nice angle, come. Let's, where, where should we do this? This is really cool. This, like, yeah, of like the whole, the whole of Battery Park. Let's, uh, let's do that. Wow, okay, this is literally, it feels like it's gonna be a three, 360 degree panoramic view, but let's just take a photograph there. What do you think? A lot of people, this is a little hack with, with a panoramic camera. You can get like some really sweet shots like that. Oh look, there's fish down here, check. <laughs> down there. Actually, let me just get the video. Let's do, let me see if I can take a, a shot of a video. So resolution 720p, 1080p, 4K. Um, I'm gonna zoom in here, see if I can catch these fish. Oh, well, I've just swam into like a very murky part of the water. Sherbet. Sure, one times 4K. One times 4K. Oh, wow, that focus pull was really good. Wow, okay. So, <laughs> we just accidentally discovered this. Focus pull is actually something that the chipset does. Uh, has to recognize and interpret what the subject is and pull between the two. So, I'm busy filming right now. And obviously it's got this really wide, a far focal distance. It's like focusing on what's in the background. But if I bring my hand up to the camera, it just automatically snaps to it. And it does it so fast. That's wild. This is great, for instance, if you are a content creator and you're shooting box unboxings or anything that you're holding up to the camera, or if somebody just enters frame and it just pulls focus really. And that, that was in 4K as well, hey? That, <laughs> that wasn't in a, yeah. That wasn't in like a, a low resolution mode where the heavy lifting of the chipset uh, would struggle in a normal situation. So yeah, uh, like honestly, props to MediaTek for that. There's an ultra steady mode, uh, which locks the camera off to 1080p. So this is what it looks like on, and I'm just gonna run. I mean, I'm shaking the camera. I'm shaking this camera. <laughs> And then let's look at it off. So I've just switched it off now. Let me know what you think. What does that look like? We actually haven't had a look at the selfie video mode, but I think this looks <laughs> rather incredible. The dynamic range in this shot is actually really impressive. And what I mean by dynamic range is that the background over here is very, very bright. Um, and the camera that we have now, that we're shooting this with, would actually normally struggle. We've had to put like ND filters on just to make sure that the difference between the shadows and the light are actually cool. But look at this. I'm in the shadow, right? And it's picking me up really well. And it's picking up detail in the back. So what, what it's doing is, it's also a processor thing. The processor is processing the footage on the background over here 
in its overexposed nature and the footage in the foreground which would be underexposed is more in dark and kind of putting them together in something that looks really usable so we're gonna yeah you know, we're trying out this extra hd mode um i actually don't know what it does to be to be fair Yeah, that was the one times zoom and then there's like the two times uh, lens. Let's just, I don't know, let's take a photo of these plants. Yeah. You can add filters in real time as well. So you can have like vivid, warm, cool. That's quite nice. I would, I would typically just use the original and then uh, edit it in Lightroom. Lightroom works really well on mobile. Let's hit the skate park. Right, what do you want to do? Whatever, I'll just cruise around and get some rails. I want, I want to test the, I think we can test the steady cam. I'll run after him like an idiot. Okay, go for it. Oh, with a close-up. <laughs> I, I was like, I hope that, you know when you're sprinting, you're like, I hope that's in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. Epic, <sighs> okay, cool, sick. Thank you so much for watching my quick look of the Oppo Arena 10 5G uh, of the camera system. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below in the comment section. I'm gonna be in there. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more on the Oppo Arena 10 5G if you wanna see some of the gaming performance. Remember, I gotta come, I've gotta go do that. Uh, remember to go back and watch the video breaking down the device that I did uh, holistically and have subscribed to see what we can do for gaming. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.